welcome to the Cap Guy Show, starring JT and the Cap Guy. Now here's the Cap Guy. And a one, and a two, and a three. I'm getting ten dollars, right? I said, "Come on, JT. You I told you I was gonna give you ten dollars." Fifteen. <laughs> now we're not negotiating now that we're on the air. Come on, people are waiting. Fifteen dollars. All right, all right. I'll give you fifteen dollars. Twenty. <laughs> JT. Come on, now you can't change after you've already bought the product. I ain't buying no product. You want me to embarrass myself? It's 20 now. <laughs> 20 in a bag of Cheetos. <sighs> All right, 20 in a bag of Cheetos. Come on. All right, do the one, two, three again. <laughs> You're starting to get on my nerves there, buddy. I can make it 25. <laughs> Never mind. All right, 20 in a bag of Cheetos. And a one, and a two, and a three. Coming list to a store about a man named Jed, a poor mountaineer, barely fed, kept his family fed. And then one day he was shooting at some food, and up through the ground come a bubbling crew. Hillbilly, that is. Hats too big, pipes in the head. Hey, can I get some of that shine? I got a sippy cup. <laughs> you ain't got no ID. Ma, where's my birth certificate? <laughs> oh, my goodness. Uh well, okay, can you take the hillbilly hat off of me? I ain't no hillbilly. I'm an okie. <laughs> uh, they're pretty close. Uh, uh, you said that. I didn't. <laughs> anyway. Hey, you gonna clear this room up? You got a lot of crap in here. <laughs> it ain't crap. It's money. You gotta look at it as money. And as long as I get my 20 and Cheetos, I'm good. You can throw in a tip, too, if you like. Uh, anyway. Well... Cap guy got a bunch of stuff to show you over two days. One day wasn't very good, but hey, sales are sales. Profits, profit. That's the cap guy saying. And I'm repeating it. Did I get an extra tip on that one? Maybe. If I get another subscriber out of it or something. All right. Y'all know what to do. You know what to do. Uh, help help me out. Give me one of them cha-ching $5 deals, you know, that people get on their channels to help, help him out. So anyway. All right. Let's get on with it. You going back to state selling today? I might. I might. I'll talk about it. All right. Well, I got to get through all this clutter. Hang on. Y'all have a good day. All right. I got a box in the mail, and I kind of think I know what it is. It better not be a glitter bomb. But it's from uh, Charles. Wow. Didn't know that was the name. And Marcy, Chuck and Marcy, Back Road Bitter and Frugal Peanut Reseller. And the cat guy is opening the box. I'm not showing the address because I don't want y'all sending any illegal stuff to Chuck. Oh boy. It says open immediately. And I was about to eat my lunch, but when it said open immediately, I mean, you know, this could be part of my lunch. So there you go. Cheese curds. Wrapped in eBay tape, too. That's what's really cool. You know you're an eBay reseller when you wrap your cheese curds in eBay tape. Kind of like my daughter did my pickup truck with the window that won't stay up. I had to take a bunch of eBay tape off my window because I know people will know I'm a reseller if I drive around like that. Okay. Here come the squeaky cheese curds, and I will refrigerate them. And uh, a bottle of Jim Beam, too. Holy smoke. Jim Beam and cheese curds. Mmm. -hmm. Mmm. Just need a cracker. Andy Griffith. Nothing like a rich cracker and cheese curds. Mmm. Mmm. Don't y'all wish you had some? Mmm. -hmm. Let's see what else is in the box. Oh, heck, I should have wrote the, wrote the note first. Bobby and JT. Why is everybody dressed up to JT like he can read? <laughs> kind of looks like JT. No. Got to put on my glasses, read this small handwriting. Bobby and JT. 
Here's a squeaky treat to say thank you for your support and being a friend. I am a friend. Back Road Bitter Chuck and Frugal Peanut Reseller Marcy. P.S. The $500 cash is for subscribing to my channel. Where is that at? Hey, Chuck, you forgot that part. Send money now. I'll be like the kid at college, right? Hold up the banner. Send money, Mom. Well, I guess I'm old enough, almost old enough to be your dad, so I guess I... Almost, I said. Thank you again, Chuck and Marcy. And, uh... Hmm, Car Valley Cheese. You guys can go online and get your own because mine came for free. Thanks, folks. Appreciate it. All right, I went, hit some yard sales and uh, estate sales. And uh, I spent 30 at a yard sale. I spent $9.78, including tax, at an estate sale. And another $5 at a yard sale where I didn't, uh, <clears throat> or I bought shelving for myself, but that, that was five bucks. Uh, at the estate sale, I picked up a few items. This is Gone with the Wind 50th anniversary for a dollar on VHS. So no big deal there. Um, other VHS that I got was... And this one was at Play It Again video for $55. It is 10, Dudley Moore and Bo Derek, if you remember that movie. I wonder if they had a Marlboro towel. Hmm, if you watch yesterday's video, you'd understand that joke. Um, this is on, is that VHS? Yeah, it is VHS, okay. It's just a big box. Uh, that one I got for a dollar. A classic. This was also $54.95 and at one time $83. And I have not comped these. This is Blazing Saddles. And this one was $65 on VHS. Another classic, Caddyshack. Yeah. 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 And then Sealed, Gone with the Wind on DVD. Looks like it was $18, $17.88 at uh, Walmart. And I paid five for this. So I don't know, again, what the comps are on that. But that's what I bought at the one estate sale for $9.78. At the $30 sale, I got Super Mario Brothers. It's a puzzle, 550 piece. And I think that was a dollar. And again, I spent 30 for everything. I'm going to try to work around this stuff so I can show you. I didn't really want to get it, but it was two bucks. OU golf head cover. This one's cool. This golf head cover was $2 as well. That's a Rasta there, buddy. I wonder if he could sing some bar, Bob Marley. What do you think? No woman, no cry. Got my Marlboro Beach towel. No woman, no cry. There you go. See? Cap guy. Cap guy. Um, this he wanted 20 and he wouldn't budge on it. And I thought it was just a Monopoly game. It's a big wood, almost like a chess thing. So I asked him about it. And apparently this is four games in one. It ain't just Monopoly. It's got drawer, a drawer. It's a, I'm going to actually move the camera because ugh, <laughs> it's, uh, it's very heavy. I don't think I'd try to ship this. I'm going to comp it but I may keep this. It's got chess, sorry, monopoly, and another game, and I'm assuming the chess board's on the other side of this. Yeah, there's sorry right there. I'm gonna try to tilt you a little bit. This is sorry. There's a chess board in here, and monopoly on the top, and 20 bucks for that big wood thing. That could sit on a table, be a nice decorative piece, but you can also play four different games. I ain't figured out what the fourth game is yet, but I will. Uh, the next thing, and I really didn't want to buy this whole box, but it's a whole box of baseball cards. But he had these 1990 NHL hockey, and it's supposed to have an Eric Lindros in it. And these don't look like, I mean, they're not sealed, but I don't think there's any missing, and I think, and they're all pristine. So cards are hot right now, folks. 
I really haven't got it into a lot of cards, and I have a bunch in my garage uh, that I need to go through that are from like the late 80s, early 90s, including a, I know I got a Frank Thomas rookie, um, White Sox, and uh, there you go. So I bought it. He wa I wanted he wanted 10 for the whole box uh, of cards. I offered him, I said, what do you want just for this box? And he said 10. So I decided to go ahead and take the whole tub for 10. Oh, almost lost it, folks. Woo, that would have been fun. You ever played 500 million card pickup? It's a little different than 52 card pickup. Those are all baseball cards. And I looked through a few. I saw Gary Carter from like 1986. So it looks like a lot of them are mid 90s. And uh, again, I haven't gone through them. Here's a kind of a weird looking decorative card, but it's it's a picture for the, is it the Cubs? Now I gotta look. Y'all ain't got nothing else to do. Uh, Chicago Cubs, Tom Gorzolani. This is Topps Diamond, and this is from 1985? No. Man. Oh, it looks like he was with other teams, too. The Cubs and the Pirates. So, there you go. Well, that's just one of the millions. He also had a bag of VHS. Oh, my God. Ugh. This is all VHS tapes, and I didn't want them either. I wanted these, and he wanted five for that whole bag, and I will go through those as well. But he had seasons one and two of Seinfeld on DVD, and one, two, and three, I'm sorry. And he wanted five for the whole bag, including these, and this is what I was after, so guess what? I grabbed them, and uh, looks like I'm going to look through here. Oh, look at this one. 1995 Dallas Cowboys. How about them Cowboys? Yeah. Okay. Beverly Hills Cop, Scarface, Godfather, Doc Hollywood. Um, Killer Clowns from... No, I'm kidding. That's worth about 200 bucks. I ain't looked through the bag, but I will. And then three books that were a dime a piece. I didn't take the time to look them up because they were a dime a piece. And you can tell me if you know anything about them before I comp them. The Sword Thief, 39 Clues, another one, Beyond the Grave, 39 Clues, and this one was kind of cool, Rick Riordan, book one of The Maze of Bones. Hmm, wonder if you could put bismuth on these bones and sell them. I mean, they are skulls, right, MML? Uh, what else did I get? I think that's it, folks. I think that is it. So I will do some comping, see what I got my hands on, and uh, grab my Marlboro beach towel and head for the backyard. Y'all have a great day, and I hope you enjoyed it. Can't be, I'll talk to you later. All right, we're gonna get into the sales over the last two days, and then I'll correct a couple of things, and we'll go from there. I may run back to the estate sale today since it's half off. There were a couple things that I was interested in, but not at the price that they had it. Um. Where to begin? Where to begin? All right. One of the first things I... I sold two on Friday. That's why I didn't do a what sold yesterday. I thought, well, I'll just combine it with Sundays. And uh, this is one of the items. I paid a buck for this. It's Xbox 360 Battlefield Bad Company uh, Ultimate Edition. Paid a dollar, sold it for five fifty with free shipping. So I'll be lucky to make a dollar or two off that. Um, the other thing that I sold is Mr. Caddyshack. If you remember the movie, na -na 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 that scene, you know, where he's putting and everything goes in. It's a Christmas ornament by Hallmark, and I paid a quarter for this, and I sold it for fourteen fifty with free shipping. So again, not a huge profit, but hey, it is what it is, right? The next thing that I sold on, this is now going into, and I'll pop up my sales and profit on those items. Uh, yesterday, I had 12 sales. After the bad day on Friday, I decided to end all the promoted listings in my store at 
2% and I just decided to go for five, see what happens. And this is what happened. I had 12 sales, almost $300 in sales. So, you know, I guess you got to look at it a couple different ways, but the way I look at it is money in the bank. So there we go. The first thing I sold yesterday was this, it's a crossbody bag. So you see a lot of, a lot of harness here or a strap. It is a flapped and zipper National Wildlife Federation uh, bag. And I've got another one that's kind of a Sierra Club type thing. So anyway, I paid uh, 35 cents. I got this at the bins, sold it for 12.75 plus shipping on top. So I'll make some good money on that and I'll pop my profit up so you'll see it. The next are Nike. Uh, gotta get them out of the box. And this is how we skew our shoes. We put them in priority boxes and have them ready. The only thing I'll have to do is take these out and uh, wrap them because I don't like the leather uh, or cloth to rub up against each other in the transit and uh, potentially damage them. So I'll do that and then fill it and then ship it. And it's already in the box. Nike, uh, Zoom shoes. These are, I believe, 11 and a halfs. I paid $10 for these, and I sold these for $25 on a best offer plus shipping, and I will pop up my profit on those. Um, the next is Estee Lauder, and this one is, because I've got a couple of these different ones, this one is the Beautiful Sheer. It's about 95% full. Paid three dollars at an estate sale for this, and I sold it for forty-seven twenty. Forty-seven twenty. So make sure you look at these things when you're at these estate sales, even if they're not full. You got to kind of go through that eBay thing where because they think everything's full, and that's what it's supposed to be now. But I still sell them used, and these were uplisted before they changed their little policy. But uh, I will pop up my profit because shipping on top as well. The next is another perfume. I guess it was perfume day. This is galore, but it is called the, it's a vintage Royal secret, uh, perfume splash. And you can see it's about, I'd say 35, 40% full. Um, I paid $3 for this at that same estate sale and I sold it for $23 with free shipping. Perfumes and colognes have to go ground no matter what. The weight is it, it's got to go ground and, and uh, of course typically they're going to be a few ounces um, i do buy the little plane stickers they're circle stickers with a do not put on a plane basically uh through them because uh i want to make sure that's the case and i don't want to be responsible for something happening if it was to actually get on a plane and that plane go down and i didn't do my part so uh, that's something you need to think about when you're selling these things they always have to go first class or parcel post um, because you you don't want them getting on in a priority situation and I'll pop up my profit for that the next is a I've had this for a little while and I actually got this at the bins as well I actually thought it was a pretty cool jacket um, Horace small and it's got the uh, epaulette things on top here on the shoulders and it's a vintage windbreaker and not very insulated, but pretty cool pockets. You would, you know, you got a thing here for the badge. So a security guard or somebody might wear this. Uh, and I paid uh, $240. I got this at the bins, like I said, and I sold it for $17.50 plus shipping. That'll go in a flat rate envelope. And uh, I will pop up my profit on that. The next is uh, I actually got a message on this. This is, uh, this guy collects Batman stuff and he lives in Italy. So another international sale, by the way, the national wildlife bag is going to Canada. I'm getting a lot of international sales. So make sure you have international turned on. This is Batman and Batgirl. There you can see. And this is from, uh, I don't know if it, I don't think it's vintage. I picked this up on the, uh, 
largest world you know, yard sale in the world, supposedly, in Duncan, Oklahoma. And believe me, folks, if you're in that area this summer, uh, around August uh, or late July, you definitely want to be there. We didn't even scratch the surface that day on all those sales. Um, anyway, I paid uh, $4 for this, and I sold it for $32.99 plus shipping through the GSP going to, again, Italy. And I will pop up my profit on that. And the next is Pokemon. These are, I bought a bag of stuff for $3.49 at a thrift store last week. I put these on an auction at 99 cents and until the last day, they didn't get much love. And these are all little coin, um, little coin things, keychain coin things. They all have an opening with the Velcro, although I didn't describe that. Can't do that on eBay. But you got Charizard, Bulbasaur, and Pikachu. I'm learning my way around Pokemon. You always learn in this business. Anyway, they got a bunch of bids and ended up at $15.50. I had basically a buck invested in all three of them. So, uh, plus uh, shipping. And I will pop up my profit on those. The next is a Nintendo DS Lite. And I gave probably $3 for this, I think is what it was. Uh, it has an issue. The top screen does not work. It lights up, but the bottom screen works and plays. There's a little chip here in the hinge, so you don't. I didn't get a lot for it. It does have a charger with it. It is cobalt blue, and again, I paid a couple of bucks for this, 2 or $3. I sold it for $25 plus shipping, and I will pop up my profit. The next is a Louis L'Amour. I got three boxes of cassette tapes of Louis L'Amour books, and each one has three different books on the back, but they are audio cassettes, and they are right there. And I got three boxes of them. I picked them up at Goodwill uh, here a little while back. And if you're sitting there and you want to listen to some audio, and instead of reading the book, you can sit there and hear it. And uh, I paid uh, $7.44 for all three combined. Sold them for $26.39 plus shipping on top. Those will go priority. And uh, I will pop up my profit. The next is a ball cap, because I am the cap guy. Metal Militia. It is a fitted cap. And there you go. What size is this? Oh, it's a Flex Fit by Yupung. And, uh, yep, there you go, Metal Militia. This is going to Puerto Rico. And I paid a dollar for this. I sold it for $21.24, plus shipping on top, and I will pop up my profit. The next is another ball cap. I just listed this the other day. It was in my death pile of ball caps. It is another one of the skiing corduroy vintage caps. It is Mary Jane in Winter Park, Colorado. And it is going to Colorado, so it's going home. It's got a leather strap on the back, and it's by Eagle, which I'd never heard of before. But these old skiing winter corduroy caps, I mean, they've got some value, so they're a good thing to pick up. I did pay $232 at Goodwill, and I sold it for $13.99 plus shipping on top, and I will pop up my profit. And I think that I got one more, and I think that's the one I dropped. You heard the noise a while ago. It is NES, Nintendo, Super Nintendo, Killer Instinct, and just a cartridge. And I paid uh, $5 for this when I was buying a bunch of games. And this one I sold for $15.95 plus shipping on top. And I will pop up my profit. So on the day, I had 12 sales. And here's my cost of goods. And here is my sales, total sales, and my profit. There you go. Um, a correction on a couple of things that I did yesterday because I did the video really quick and haphazardly um, because I was trying to, it was late in the day and I wanted to get a video up and let y'all know what I had sourced. I forgot to show you the stuff I had sourced the day before and I will pop that up as well at the end of the video. Also the Dino buddy, I did do some work on him. I listened to the guy and he told me it was 90s. And I thought, man, it just doesn't seem like we had that kind of stuff in the early 90s. 
Well, it's 2007, but the remote alone is worth $15 and the dinosaur with the remote I haven't found together. Uh, so I'm sure I'll get 25, 30 bucks for that. And I paid basically maybe a dollar for it because I spent 22 at that estate sale. That's the other correction is everybody thinks I spent 22 on everything I showed yesterday. That's not correct. I spent 123 to be exact. And 22 was at the first yard sale where I got the plush, the little uh, go bots, the little transformer cars, things like that, all the VHS and one of the VHS tapes. There's one listed on eBay for $207 and I have it. Um, I, it isn't sold, so I don't know what it'll go for, but my guess is if it's listed that high, it's probably got some value. It had a $150 sticker on it. Um, I'd be tickled to get that. Again, I paid, spent 22 at the whole thing. Um, the video games, the Sega, all those were included. The plush, the, the Michael Jackson uh, t-shirts, the Shaq t-shirt, which I did get an offer on that yesterday while I was yard selling. I talked to people while I'm at yard sales and where I got the Iowa Hawkeye jersey, that person offered me 20 bucks for the shirt and I turned it down because I hadn't comped it and I didn't know what it was worth. It could be anywhere from 25 up to 75. There were some Shaq single stitch that went for 50 to 75, but there's also a couple that went into the 20s. So did I make the right choice? I don't know, but I will make more than he offered me and that's, that's, that's what the name of the game is. Folks, when you can spend a dollar and you and you can make twenty bucks, that's a, that's a that's a good day. So you got to multiply that. The ball caps I got in an estate sale for twenty five dollars. There's about a hundred, so about a quarter a cap. If any of them turn out to not be winners, they'll be either donated or thrown away uh, if they're in bad shape. And the rest of them, if I get ten, fifteen, twenty dollars a cap, I mean, you think you just put the numbers to that. That's why I sell and made more money on ball caps than anything else. It's not the only thing I do, but I do a lot of them. And uh, sometimes you take chances on things. If the cost of goods is low and you're running, and you, especially when you're first in an estate sale or a family run type deal or a yard sale where there's really good stuff potentially, grab stuff without comping it. If you've done it long enough, you kind of got an idea. And if you end up picking up a VHS tape that's worth you know, $100, you hit a home run. If you pick up a VHS tape for a quarter and it's worth $5, you still got to make a little bit of money or you can donate it. But hey, maybe you can even watch it, you know? So there's lots of aspects to this. You got to take chances, but when the cost of goods are low, you can really do that more so. And uh, and when they're high, then you just, you just walk away unless you really know what the true value is. So of course, that's why you find out this little uh, Apple E300 uh, that Newton Mate is worth $50 without any testing or 100 to 125 if I find that if I get the cord and I have looked up the cord. So I'm going to, I think I may invest a little bit in it just to see because I'm kind of curious myself even what it looks like. And uh, some of the other stuff, um, again, some of it's going to be big hits and some of it's going to be small hits. But that's what you do. That's what we're here for, right? That's the fun part of seeking out the treasure. And I love that part of it. It's all the part that's coming now that gets to be a little tedious and a little hard. But, uh, you know, that's what we do. And that's why we do it because we're trying to make some money and we enjoy what we do. And we get to, we get to set our schedule if you're full time and you don't have any other uh, job that you have to go to daily. And if you're doing it part time, you do it on the side. But, you got to list and you got to do the uh, put the effort in behind just the sourcing part and uh, you can be successful at it. And again, I made almost six figures last year and you can do it too. You can do it too. Just put in the effort, folks. If you if I can help you, let me know because that's what I'm here for. I get messages all the time on Instagram at the cap guy underscore Oklahoma uh, or in the comments of the video here. And uh, if I can help you, I'd be more than happy to help you. That's what I'm here for. I have no problem sharing my secrets because they're not secrets on this channel. I'm transparent, folks. If you like what you heard, please hit that subscribe button. Please hit the thumbs up and hit that notification bell so you know when I pop up a video. And the Cap Guy and JT, we will talk to you tomorrow as we always do. And uh, have a great Sunday, folks.